Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. We're out in the woods and I found a big rock that's sitting here in a nice shady spot and so I thought this was a perfect place to talk about the Cold Steel SRK which is a very very popular Cold Steel model. It's been around for quite a long time however it hasn't been as uh, I guess as readily available as this one is because of the price point. I mean it's always been readily available but uh, the price would be such that some people would be put off. However, this guy comes in, I think around $40, maybe even less in the US. And I didn't really mean to rhyme there, but that's okay. Um, and so I wanted to pick this up. There's also a couple of other changes that made me interested in this knife. The first thing is it has a hollow grind, which makes it a little thinner behind the edge. That's definitely something I appreciate. And it has a smaller ricasso area, which to me and to on this particular knife is kind of important. So we'll go ahead and talk about all of those things as we work our way through the knife. Uh, to begin, let's talk a little about size and weight. This knife is 10 and 7 eighths overall. So that's the full length there. It's got a 6 and 1 eighth inch blade, but notice there the ricasso area is not sharpened. So you lose a little bit of blade length. In terms of actual cutting edge, you end up with 5 and 7 eighths. The blade stock is a fairly hefty 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And the grip area on this guy is four and a quarter inches. So quite a generous grip area there. The overall handle area is about five inches. All right, just a little under that. Anyway, uh, the other big thing that we care about on this is what happens when you add a sheath to it and how heavy is it when you add a sheath to it. So first of all, let me throw this back in the sheath and then get it back on camera for you. So there's the knife in the sheath. And in this configuration, this guy is going to take up about 11 and a quarter inches. So that's, you know, if, that's, if it's hanging from your belt, that's no big deal. If it's in a pack or in a pocket, that's probably something you're going to want to think about. The other thing is weight. And the weight on this altogether is going to be about 10 ounces. Hold on, I'm just going to reposition myself a little. There we go. And the knife alone is going to be about 7 ounces. Okay, that's not exact, that's just kind of a, a close approximation of weight. So, what do I think of this knife? What use is it? What, uh, what benefit is this knife over some others that you may have tried? Well, one, uh, I really like knives with a hollow grind, okay, and that's definitely important to me. I guess we'll just go right into blade, and then from the blade we'll be able to talk a little bit about uh, performance here. So, uh, whoops, we've got a clip point blade with a hollow grind, black finish, uh, fairly thick blade stock, but still reasonably thin behind the edge, okay, and a decent edge geometry. So this actually doesn't slice horribly. Now it's not the knife you're gonna want for, you know, cutting up apples or slicing tomatoes or something like that, but for most of your cutting tasks that you're gonna be, you know, needing it for out in the bush, it's gonna work just fine. I'll show, throw a couple things in here that might be helpful to you. First off, you know, thinness behind the edge matters. If you're doing sort of a push cut like that, the thinner that knife is, the deeper it's going to cut. So let me see if I can demonstrate just a little bit for you and take a bit of a notch out of this uh, thin piece of maple, fairly green piece of, of wood here. So you can see with push cutting, I can get a decent amount out of there. Uh, if I needed to make feather sticks or something like that, this is very green, so it wouldn't be the the piece of wood I would pick if I was actually going to start a fire but you can see I can kind of whittle on it pretty gently there and get some pretty thin feathers which is one of the challenges that you'll sometimes get with a survival knife is they're so thick behind the edge that doing some kind of fine carving task or cutting task is really difficult but this one definitely is more than capable of that. Now the one area that this doesn't really shine in terms of you know, what you're gonna do with this blade is there's not a lot of weight here. So any kind of chopping, I mean, you could do some light chopping, maybe if you're cleaning small twigs off a, a stick, you know, maybe you're making a wiener roasting stick or something, you can do some very light chopping, but it's not gonna be ideal for that role. This is more of a knife for cutting, uh, or, you know, there is, certainly you can just take a look at the design and see that there's definitely a combat role in mind as well for this knife. In terms of, you know, outdoor use as a utility knife, it's thin enough behind the edge and that hollow grind is thin enough, makes it thin enough, I guess, that it'll do a lot of cutting tasks pretty well. 
in the normal version, though I've only played with one a little bit, I haven't actually owned one. In the normal version, I found it just a little thick for most of the things that I wanted to do with it. Anyway, uh, let's move on now. So that blade, oh, by the way, the blade steel is not a stainless steel, so the coating does help. In terms of edge retention, I've found it fairly similar to a lot of my other survival type of blades, whether it be, you know, an SE or uh, <clears throat> hold on, let me let me grab a cup. Ah, no, we'll get to comparisons in a minute. But I, I have found this to be, you know, a fairly typical survival knife type of steel. Doesn't have the best edge holding capabilities, but you can sure get a quick edge back on it out in the field without too many problems. So that's, you know, that's a balance that most knives like this are trying to strike. They want to be tough, they want to be durable, and they want to be sharpenable in the field. And this one definitely, I think, fits that role just fine. I don't have any real complaints about performance in terms of, you know, did it roll or did it chip or break? I haven't had any of those kind of problems. I found it to be quite adequate for all of the things that I want to do with it. Now, is it 20 CV or something like that or 3V? Well, no, it's not, okay? Uh, you got to you gotta think about the price point on this. And uh, and what I would say is for the price point, this is absolutely fine. In fact, it's even good, all right? Now, what about the handle? The handle is something that I want to talk about just a little bit more. I will say this in hand, it is extremely grippy, extremely comfortable, and that I really, really enjoy. The thicker blade stock does mean that if you want to choke up on this and do some finer cutting tasks with a saber grip, works really well for that. It's extremely good in terms of, you know, if it's a little bit wet or a little, if you're really sweaty or anything like that. The grippiness on this is fantastic, so I really like that. Big enough lanyard hole there that you can get some 550 cord through it or something if you're doing some hard work and you're afraid to drop it. The one complaint I have about this handle is I guess the two complaints I have. One is just a construction one, and that is I wish there was an exposed tang back here so that if you wanted to pound on something with the pommel, you could do that. The other thing is I, I would like to see this brought even closer. There's a little bit of separation here between, you can see the front of my index finger and the base of the blade. There's a little bit of separation there, and that length is always troubling to me. So. I always feel like I want it as close as possible, either through you know taking this right down to as close as we can get, or giving me a finger choil. All right, this has neither one of those. Now it is closer than the standard version, or the the original version, I guess is how we should be saying that, and so I do appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, blade construction is good. It is a full tang knife. It's just not an exposed tang knife. I wish it were. Uh, feels great in hand, extremely good retention. You know, if you're sweaty and it's slippery, wet, anything like that, uh, not a problem at all. Okay, uh, let's talk finally about the sheath and then we'll get to some comparisons. So this sheath is, you know, a, a plastic sheath, reinforced plastic, but it's really, really high retention. So you're not gonna lose this knife. You can put it in any configuration you want. All right, you're not, this is not falling out on you no matter what you do, so you could easily put it upside down. There's a little bit of shake in there, which I don't know, to me is not a big problem. So overall, I'm definitely a fan of this sheath. I love the, the nice thumb ramp that it has so that the knife can get in and out fairly simply and very quickly. The only issue I have is the, and this is not a, a huge deal, I'm not in love with this belt loop, okay? Um, I will say this, I like the fact that I can move it around. The other thing I like about this sheath is look at all the, the options I have in terms of how I'm gonna attach this. And so because of that, I could go out and buy an aftermarket loop of any kind that I wanted and have no problem getting it attached to this sheath. So I do have quite a few options that way. <sighs> Gotta move one more time here before I get to the end of the video. Get this knife back out here for you. So yeah, the sheath, other than the belt loop, I really, really like the sheath. And even with the belt loop, I find no big issue with it. Uh, let's see, gotta get some comparisons here. First off, let's bring out the Kaiser Task 2, fairly small EDC style fixed blade. And that's one thing I do wanna demonstrate. I wouldn't be advocating for this as a, an EDC type of knife. It is definitely an outdoors or survival or rescue type of knife, as the name implies, okay? And so in keeping with that theme, let me grab a few that I think fit this role fairly well. Here's one of my favorite knives that fit into this category. This is the Topps Idaho Hunter. I adore this blade. 
Um, but look at the, the difference here. The thing that makes me, I guess, like this a little bit more is the ergonomics. I can really get up and do some fine detailed work on here. Now you are losing a substantial amount of cutting edge, even though the knives are not all that different in size and weight. Here is the SE6. Very close in size. In fact, I may do a full comparison between these two. Both of these are very classic, very iconic, sort of outdoor survival type of knives. And both of them do a really, really good job. There are some places that the SE is gonna shine a little bit more. By the way, the SE, you're gonna pay a little bit more as well. Apparently I don't know how knife, knife sheets work. Hold on, there we go. And I've got one more comparison for you and that is the Charade SCHF 52. Now the SCHF 52 has, has gone with a nylon sheath and that's how they keep their price point down. Uh, these two knives are actually fairly close in price. Now uh, the SCHF 51 is gonna be a little closer in size, although if you notice the cutting length is not that different. The biggest advantage you're getting from this knife is the ability to do a bit of chopping. There's enough weight in this blade and enough length that if you back out here or even get your pinky down here and just kind of hook with these two fingers, you can do some chopping with this where this knife is just not gonna do it. Now you're also quite a bit smaller, quite a bit lighter with this. And so, you know, it's, it's absolutely a trade-off that you'd have to consider and it all depends on what you're looking for. For me, I kind of prefer to move to a smaller knife and carry a hatchet or, or you know, maybe a large chopper. If I'm gonna chop with a knife, I want it to be a big heavy duty thing. This is sort of in this weird middle ground where it can do some chopping, but it's not ideal for it. Let me get that one put away and give you my sort of last thoughts or my final conclusion on this knife. Do I like it? Do I think it's useful? Should you buy one? Well, look, if, if you like this design and you think you can get a lot done with it, I would not hesitate to buy this. I think the quality is definitely there. The ergonomics is absolutely there. The blade shape is good for the kind of work that this is meant for. As I said, it's not a camp knife. You're not gonna be cutting up apples with it, but for survival and rescue type of stuff, or even for a tactical role, this knife is very, very good. However, there are quite a few knives that you would want to be looking at. This, this lands you know, in the realm of the charade and it lands in the realm of a number of Becker knives and some Ontario knives and some Essie knives. So you're going to want to do some heavy comparison shopping, but I definitely think Cold Steel has done a good job giving me a blade here that's highly useful, highly comfortable, where I really, really like the sheath. So it's got a lot going for it. And I certainly don't have a lot of bad to say about it. Uh, I guess it's sort of one of those things where if you like the design and you like the way it performs, I wouldn't hesitate. If there are, you know, however, that ha that being said, I wouldn't for a second try to suggest that this is the only good budget survival knife out there. I know there are lots of them and this is just another option in our in our plethora of great choices. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, you might as well follow me on Instagram as well. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.